Thanks for seeing me again so soon, Doctor. Just watch the pencil. I know you said last week that it was probably eye strain, and I've been really trying to rest them, but they watch still the hurt. Watch the pencil. So you've been resting them? Yeah. No, I mean, I've been getting to sleep, but I've been waking up a lot lately. Because your eyes hurt? Kind of. Bad dreams. I haven't been there. Really scary ones. Look at the one for me. Could that be eye impairment related? No, that's what I thought at first, but according to nightmares.com, bad dreams are almost always caused by something called personal problems. You know, money, romance. <sighs> that's what I wish. Hold still. I'm sure it's nothing, and I know that everyone's vision changes over time, but I'm a photographer, so... That's the smell. What smell? Your smell. I have a smell. You're a photographer? Yeah. That's the smell. Known it since I was a kid. Look here. Yeah, my mom printed all her own photos. Turned half the kitchen into her dark room. I was 14 before I realized meatloaf wasn't supposed to taste like silver chloride. I was in the dark room all night. I must reek. And some mashed potatoes. You smell just like dinner. So what's my diagnosis, Doc? Well, we still got a few more tests. So you think there's a problem, huh? Like my mom used to say, let's see what develops. <laughs> dark room humor. I like that. You don't really need glasses. You're just trying to look cool. No, doctor's orders. He doesn't want me straining my baby blues when I read. You've already had three appointments with this doctor. Yep, and it just so happens that I have a date with him. Yeah, right. I do. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You're going out with a doctor. You have a date with a doctor? Jeez, Cassie. What? You have a date with a doctor. Tell me more about the dream. <sighs> okay, so there was this woman, and she had a baby, and she was, like, running. What'd she look like? Actually, she kind of looked like me. Really? What? Sounds to me like you're already planning a family with this doctor. Well, if I am, I wasn't very happy about it. There you go. I've never really dated a patient before. Not that it's unethical or anything. Oh, so this is strictly ethical. Actually, I was just at a conference where we were discussing this very issue, and it Actually, came up. Actually, here's to not talking shop. What did the ophthalmologist say to the pretty girl? Here's looking at you, kid. You get it? That's pretty lame. Awful. Mm. It's one of the worst I've ever heard. Yeah. I had a great time tonight. Me too. And I, I know we agreed not to talk shop, but I think I figured out what's wrong with your eyes. Oh, really? You know what it is? Yeah. They're too beautiful. No, no, seriously. I shouldn't worry. Seriously? You should probably just rest them. Given your age and family history, it's probably nothing serious. But since I filled out that my mom and dad's vision is fine, then my eyes should be fine. In fact, why don't you close them right now? Right now? Mm-hmm. I told you in the message, though, I lied to him. You lied to a doctor. Okay. Don't give it a second thought. Plenty of perfectly adequate relationships are built on nothing but lies. Well, I didn't lie about me. I mean, I guess I sort of did, but I didn't think it would matter. It never has. Babe, how can I give you the benefit of my bad advice if I have no idea what you're talking about? We were talking about families, and I lied about my mom and dad. Okay, can we get back to the part about the kissing? Cassie, I'm trying to tell you something, something I have never told anyone before. Okay. I'm adopted. It's true. I met your mom. She's my mom, but I am adopted. How come you never told me? I've never told anybody. 
I'm not even supposed to know. I saw some papers by accident back when I was applying for financial aid for college. So my parents left these papers on the table and I peeked at them. And I saw my birth mom gave me up. Anyway, my name was on it. Was your birth mom's name on it? I don't know. You didn't look at it? No, my mom was coming, so I just covered it up. Wow. Will you help me find my birth mom? I'll make some calls. I'll find her. Look, I understand there are confidentiality laws, but this is a medical emergency. No, petitioning the court would take too long. Thanks. Not going smoothly, huh? That's why God created billable hours. What'd you find? No listing of the law firm. Maybe I remember the name wrong. Victor Short of Short and Long Associates? No way you made that one up. Maybe the firm isn't from around here. You said the adoption would be formalized in the county of the adoptive parents. Right, but the papers you saw were for the relinquishment. So you think I could have been born somewhere else? Exotic, huh? What's exotic? Uh, Hawaii or Mexico. We can't decide which vacation we'd like more. Don't overlook Guam. Good beaches and a great exchange rate. Wow. Guam then. Thank you, Philby. All right. Okay, so where were we? You were about to reveal the place of my birth. Right. Sacramento, California Bar Association. Hi, I'm trying to track down a fellow member of the bar. What year were you born? 78. Victor Short, a partner in the firm of Short and Long Associates? Yes, I'll hold. So, let me ask you something. If you hadn't have met Dr. Goodkisses, when were you going to find your birth mom? Eventually, when things were a little less complicated. You mean never? Yeah, something like that. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes, thank you. Here you go. Victor Short, Whiptail, California. Where is that? Between Sacramento and Tahoe, six hour drive, maybe seven. So I'll just be gone a few days. If you need me, call me on my cell phone. Have you seen my charger? This one? Thank you. It's just family business. So you said. Drive carefully. And if you feel sleepy, pull over. Philby, it's only six hours. Maybe seven. Philby. Samantha, when you need me to know more, you'll tell me. Chicken with goat cheese, grilled chicken, not so goaty. Eat up, guys, it's a long ride home. Oh, hi, would you like to uh, sit inside or outside? Neither, I'm not here for lunch. Oh, well then you actually came to the right place because the service here is lousy. You're lucky if you ever get your food. Well, that's one way to stay thin. Whiptail diet. It's got bestseller written all over it. What can I not get you? 
Actually, I was looking for an address, 33 Madeira Road. This is it? I mean, this is a great place, but I was looking for a... A law office. For Victor Short. Yeah, but they gave me this address. Oh, no, you got the right address there. Hi, I'm Victor Short, Jr. Victor Short Sr. is the lawyer. Oh. But he died eight years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and you need to talk to him because you are adopted. How did you know that? I'll be right back. I'm gonna get my dad's files. Be right back. You know, I found with the others, the best thing to do right about now is to sit. You don't sweat it. I was adopted too. Hello? Hi, thanks for getting back to me. Yeah, Hannah Branford. Okay, perfect. No, nothing confidential, just the marriage records. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Bye. You may want to try that. Hannah Marie McPhillips. According to her marriage records. You know, Tawny Falls is, is right across the valley. Wow. It's just like a hot stove. What is? You know, if you touch a hot stove, you don't do it again because you know you'll get burned. Is that a theory? I don't think so. I think it's more like a metaphor for fear of rejection. I really appreciate your help, but I'm just looking for some routine medical history. Okay. <laughs> it's just there's nothing routine about meeting your real parents for the first time. I'm really gonna be fine. Listen, Sam, I, uh, I know what you're going through, okay? And I've had all those same feelings. For years, I, I thought that my mother gave me away because she didn't want me, you know, because there was something wrong with me. And facing that rejection again, even as an adult, it's like putting your hand near a hot stove. Thanks, Philby. I really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, you bet. See you soon. Doing here? You've got to go. Wait, I'm. Get out of here. Get out of here now and don't Wait, come here. Right Mrs. McPhillips, you have no idea how he got into the house? No, I, I don't. Um, I just 
came home and saw the body lying there. I called 911 and went outside to wait, and she was standing there. And why exactly are you here, Miss uh, Kinsey? I was collecting donations for the Retinitis Pigmentosa Research Fund. A door-to-door -door kind of thing? Am I a suspect? Are you? How am I a suspect, Sheriff? The guy was shot. I don't have a gun. I have no powder residue on my hands. Well, maybe not, but there's the uh, matter of this note that my deputy found in your little truck out there. It's got Hannah's name and address right on it. Hey, Sheriff? Yeah. I dug this out of that wall. It's an odd one. What do you, uh, what do you make of it? Smaller than a 38. I'll make it 32 caliber. You dug that out of the wall? Aren't you afraid you'll damage important evidence? It's drywall. You practically yank it out with your fingers. Shouldn't the crime scene unit be collecting the evidence? <laughs> Whiptail doesn't have a crime scene unit. Whiptail doesn't have any crime. We had that stolen RV. That was a good one. Well, maybe the lack of crime is all the more reason to call on the experts, you know? The guys who know what they're doing. Skyler, give me a time of death. Have rigor in the eyes and the face muscles. None in the arms and the body. The body's cooling, but it's still warm. Unfixed lividity, between three and four hours ago. Okay, tell me about the wound. Ah, it's a clean exit, and there's no murder weapon, so it wasn't self-inflicted. From where I found the slug, I'd say our Vic took it standing up, face to face, probably from about 10 to 12 feet away. Good peeps. Special Forces. My boys here did uh, tours in Afghanistan. Really? So what are you guys doing here? Yeah, why are you here? Shredding the mountain. Awesome snowboarding, six months of the year. Nah, extreme mountain biking, the other six. <laughs> Mom! 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 It's all right. It's okay. It's You're the daughter? Yes, she is. I'm Sheriff Powell. We spoke on the phone. They said there was a problem. Is everything all right? Everything's all right. I, I didn't uh, want to worry you on the phone, but a man was murdered here in the house. Oh, my God, you saw it. She saw the body when she got back. Who are you? I'm Samantha Kinsey. I was here when the police arrived. Why? It's all right, honey. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, can I assume that you're coming from work? Uh, do you have a key to your mother's house? No, she doesn't. Well, the man got in somehow. Anyone else with a key? A uh, housekeeper? Uh, workmen? Any other children? No. No, just my husband. Oh, Skyler, did you get a hold of uh, Mr. McPhillips? Cell phone's not responding. He was driving up to Sacramento. Just all of a sudden? He He's in sales. He he drives up there at least once a week. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what we should do. They have a bunch to finish up before they can take the victim, but why don't you come with me to the station? Sure. Does she really have to do that? Yeah, we need to get a full statement. Just fill in a few details. So is Hannah a suspect? Not at this point. Well, then she doesn't have to go. Look, I know this is frustrating, but the bottom line is, is we got the dead body of a man nobody knows lying in a house nobody let him into. She has rights. Yeah, and we've got questions. And the man's got no ID, no wallet, no money. Let's go then. I've got nothing to hide. You can't just take her. It isn't right. It's just routine questioning. I want to go with her. No, you can meet her over at the stage. But she didn't do anything. It isn't right. She didn't do anything. It isn't right. You need to call your lawyer. You should call my dad. Your mother is about to become the primary suspect in a murder investigation. You need to help her. We can call from the car. I'll drive. <laughs> You still walk like an elephant. I snuck up on you, didn't I? Only because I let you. You're the world's least covert, covert agent. It's good tea. I stopped drinking, you know. Eleven years sober. You look good. Now you want to know why I'm here. Remember George Rabetta? There's no such person. He had visions? Nightmares. Perfectly accurate nightmares. He dreamed exactly what people were doing and where they were doing it. Every intelligence agency in the world wanted him, but we got him. You and me. He saved a lot of people's lives. 
It might have saved more for you to have handled it, right? But now you're here. Instead of the career that you wanted, instead of the career that you loved, you're out here in the middle of nowhere. And by the way, so is George Rabetta. George is alive. Again. And the police have him. Response on my dad's cell. He's been driving through a dead zone. Call your lawyer directly. I don't have a lawyer. You know what? I got a source for all things legal. Cassie. Samantha. How's the great white north? Uh, not so white, not so great. You having trouble finding your birth mom? Actually, I did, but forget about that for right now. I've got a friend who really needs your legal help. <laughs> Listen to you. Gone 10 minutes and you're already in trouble. No. Just listen to me, okay? It's very important. She's like a sister to me. What are you talking about, sister? Oh my gosh! You have a sister? Your mother has a... Is she there with you right now? Yeah. What does she look like? Does she know? <sighs> not yet. Why not? I bet she would love to... Well, her primary concern right now is that her mother's just been hauled in by the cops. For what? Okay, there was this murder. Your mom's a murderer? No, Cassie, geez, of course not. She's just a suspect. Okay. Don't let her talk to anyone without an attorney. Well, that's why I'm calling you. Okay, you're up in Owasco County. Yikes. What? The prosecutor up there is a real shark. You know him? Yeah, I took a bar association workshop with him once. How to convict without evidence? I'll make a couple calls. What's the prisoner's name? Hannah. Hannah McPhillips. Hmm. Your mom's name's Hannah McPhillips. That's pretty. Yeah. Go. Go and help your family. Okay. Could you help? Yeah. Good friend. This is crazy. Somebody must be able to tell me what's going on. Where is Sheriff Powell? Sorry, ma'am. He's still busy. How long have we been here? Almost five hours. This is crazy. She didn't even do anything. What could they be asking her for so long? It's time to find out. Samantha, it's so maddening. Nobody will tell me anything. Yeah, the real world is maddening without an inside source. They did ID the victim off his fingerprints. Some guy named Van Jefferson. Van, is that even a real name? They ID'd him that quickly, then he must be in law enforcement or the military. Or he's a crook, which is what I thought, but nobody will tell me anything. Okay, he's partners in a firm, Jefferson and Delson. They do some kind of insurance stuff. See, isn't it nice to have someone on the inside? How did you find that out so fast? I googled him. I gotta go. Okay? Got it. I can't really suspect my mom. I hope not. She's not that type of person. You know, when I was 13, I had my very first boyfriend, Eddie Amador. He dumped me in front of the entire seventh grade. God, I was humiliated. I thought my entire life was over. I went home and I cried. And you know what my mom said? She held me all night. She said, you are so beautiful, Francie. Over and over. Where have you been? I went to the house and the neighbor said that the police had been there. What's going on? Where's your mother? Sheriff's still questioning her. We got her an attorney. And who are you? Um, Samantha Kenzie. She was there when mom found the... I was at the house when Mrs. McPhillips found the body. You were there? 
What happened? I really don't know. You know what? She might be out now, so we should go check on her. Huh? Mom! They were finished with me for now, but I... Let's get out of here. Hang on a second. Uh, I just got some new information on that victim, Van Jefferson. What is it? Well, it's old information, actually. He was arrested and served time 28 years ago for grand theft auto and resisting arrest. His partner, who left a deputy with three broken ribs, also went to jail. Her name was Hannah Branford. That was almost 30 years ago. I, I, I didn't recognize him. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to keep you here. Sheriff, come on. She knew the victim, she knew his name, and she lied about it. She didn't lie. It's, it's a misunderstanding. Look, my mom didn't commit any crime. Well, maybe not, but until we clear it up, I'm gonna have to keep you in custody. Are you arresting her? On what charge? Suspicion of murder? Look, the district attorney's gonna have to sort this all out. Until he does, none of you leave town. Come on. I just wanted to talk to you. I brought coffee. Well, thanks. I've already had mine. You know, I'm trying to figure this thing out. So this guy was killed. Okay, Samantha, look. I appreciate what you're doing here. Um, but with all due respect, this is really none of your business. So I think you better go. The only reason I'm trying to help you save your mother is so I can get out of here. You heard what the sheriff said. I can take care of my mother by myself. Really? Yeah. How? Well, I don't know yet. She may not need our help. They may never charge her. Well, Sheriff Powell says they will. Based on what? She comes home. She finds this dead guy in her house. A guy she hasn't seen in over 30 years. Just because they went to prison together. That proves nothing. Exactly. So there's no real evidence against your mother whatsoever. Right, because my mother is innocent. But if she didn't kill him, somebody else did. What are you really doing here? What do you want? Tell me what you know about Van Jefferson. Somebody killed him for a reason. So if we can show the sheriff that somebody had motive, means, opportunity, then we can get Hannah off the hook. My mother's innocent. Well, help me prove it, Francie. Give me something to work with. I understand what you're going through. No, you don't. Is your mother in jail? knows that George is still alive. Dale Browning? It's an alias. I got it flagged along with a few of yours and mine. Anybody ever goes checking the criminal databases? An auto alert text message pops up on my cell. How's that? What? Are you the only old fart who knows how to use a computer? How long have we got before they ID Dale Browning as George Rebetta? It depends. On your local police chief. Uh, chief Connors. Yeah, so far he's only sent inquiries to the BCS database. It's just routine. I know that. But when he gets no hits from the Bureau of Criminal Statistics, he'll go on to another database and then another, unless you think that he'll just give up and make Dale Browning pay a fine and move on. You just ran a red light. He's drinking. You know, I wonder if it was booze that made old George stop seeing things. Chief Connors is like a dog with a bone. Just keeps chewing away. Well, then we better move fast. You didn't want to help me last time. No, I didn't. You said I was making a big mistake. You were. And that's come around to bite you in the rear end. But that's not saying you never saved my... 
never intentionally. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? This is a crime scene. It's also my home. They tossed my wife in jail, put tape around my house, but where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? You better leave. Not until the sheriff gets here. I called him before I came in. I'm sure he's going to be very interested to see your antique gun collection. None of those guns killed anybody. One is missing. If you think that I'd be willing to destroy evidence to protect my family, you're right. As a matter of fact, I'd be willing to get rid of anything or anybody that's out to hurt the people I love. Is that a threat? I don't like threats any more than I like lies about make-believe phone calls to sheriffs. Van Jefferson was a lying, cheating scum. Better off dead, but Hannah didn't kill him. You better get out of here now. I cannot believe I got your machine. Listen, Cassie, I need more information. Maybe something on the dead guy's partner, Carl Delson, if you can find it. And then there's the long shot, the husband, Mark McPhillips. He's got a pretty shaky alibi for the time of the murder. He says his cell phone went out. What the heck am I doing? I did not come here to play detective, and now I'm running around pretending to be someone I'm not instead of talking to the one woman who can help me know who I really am. I don't know. It's probably because I'm scared if I do talk to Hannah, I'll find out that she really did... Anyway... I called so I wouldn't do anything stupid, but since you're not there, here goes.
These plaintiffs have the same name, but different cases. Jefferson was trying to That's contact her. Even Jefferson's office. Oh, it's really dark in here. Wait, what, what is all that? Evidence, hopefully. I left it a mess in there. Is that about my mom? No, but if it is what I think it is, it might help prove that she's innocent. Great, let's use it. Crazy. Crazy. No, Yeah, we had a break in. No, I didn't recognize him. Yeah, I will. They were shooting at us. Why are they shooting at us? They're trying to kill us. Are you okay? No, I am not okay. Someone is trying to kill me, and I don't know why. Okay, listen to me. It's been my experience that when you're being shot at, you know two things. One, that you should get out of the way, and two, that you're getting closer to the truth. Where are we going? Your mother isn't being straight with either one of us. We're gonna go see her and find out what's really going on. What in the name of all that's holy were you even thinking? You know, we could resolve this whole issue if you just agree to pay for the damages and we could replace Mrs. DiLorenzo's window. Mr. Dale Brownie. Not answering to that name today, Dale? It's the one on your license. Of course, that's a fake. Seems like everything about you is fake. According to any and all public records, nobody's ever heard of you. But I'm making some inquiries into some not-so-public records that I have access to. Something will show up, Dale. A couple of real beauties we got here. I figured for a psychic, you would have seen that speed trap they busted you with. Hello, Mr. Rebetta. You're looking good for a dead man. I want to know what went on between you and Van Jefferson. She told you she didn't recognize She lied. And then I lied to the police. They asked me if I had seen her go into the house. I didn't. But what I didn't tell them was that I was outside the house for about an hour while your mother was inside with a dead man she claims never to have seen before. Hannah, are you going to tell me what's going on or should I invite Sheriff Powell in to go over the details? He called me. You mean Jefferson? Mom, you don't have to say anything else. It's okay, honey. She may as well know. It's okay. Yeah, he had been calling me for a while. So you lied to the police? I knew who he was the minute I saw him lying there. Van Jefferson was my first love. But I'm no fool. If he's calling, it's not to recapture lost love. It's because he wanted something. Money? Was he blackmailing you? Yeah, I work in insurance. I'm bonded. If my company found out I had a prior felony... They would fire you. So that's why you lied to the cops. Tell them the truth, you tell them you have a motive. Van and me, that was a million years ago. Long before either of you were born. I made a mistake, I paid for it. I got my life together. But Van didn't. Every time I heard anything about him, it was something bad. He hurt a lot of people, more than a few would have liked to have heard him back. Including you? I'm really tired. Mom, why don't you go get some rest? 
Kenzie, looking for something? Just what you should be looking for, Van Jefferson's real killer. Is that why you visited Mrs. McPhillips? You know, I try to keep an eye on everything that goes on in my jail. My mother didn't kill anyone. I also checked up on why you're really here. I spoke to a Chief Connors. He's a very nice man, very uh, professional. Well, you must have gotten your lines crossed. He had some uh, interesting advice for me. Recommends that if I want to save myself, I believe he called it a massive migraine. Then I just arrest you now, toss you in jail, and lose the paperwork. Of course, that's not exactly how we do things in Whiptail, but... Sheriff, you locked up the wrong person. I appreciate that you're both trying to help Hannah here. What about Carl Delson? The partner? You know something I don't? I know his insurance claims seem a bit fishy and that he and Van Jefferson were probably up to something illegal. And that he has a gun. You saw Carl Delson with a gun? When was that? I saw it in his... Francie. You want to finish that sentence? No, she doesn't. It's just funny, because we just got a call earlier about uh, a break-in down at Delson's offices. You know anything about that? Sheriff, have you ever given any thought to the idea that Carl Delson might have had both means and motive to kill his partner, Van Jefferson? Maybe if you look into it, check his office? Uh, I have looked into Mr. Delson. Really? I interviewed Carl Delson myself. He's got an alibi for the time Van Jefferson was murdered. And incidentally, also a permit for a handgun. A 32 caliber handgun? Miss Kinsey, I know you mean well, but unless the two of you want to end up in jail beside Hannah, you really got to chill out. The answer's in that building. Well, that's one answer. Meaning? There was no forced entry. Somebody let Van Jefferson into your mom's house. There's a possible murder weapon missing from your father's secret stash that the police don't even know about. My father had nothing to do with this. Francie, I was there, remember? I was outside the entire time your mom was inside. Yeah, she was in shock. Or not. It was a long time. Long enough to hide things, destroy things, destroy evidence that could connect her or your dad to the crime. You're talking about my mother. I don't believe this. I thought you were trying to help us. Francie, we have to consider all the facts. The only facts you need to consider is that my mother didn't kill anyone. You wouldn't be saying this if you knew her. You don't even know her. did kill Jefferson. It's the explanation that makes the most sense. Either she killed him or she's covering up for her husband. You don't know that. All I know is the more I find out, the worse it gets. Look, Sam, it's easy to get sucked in. It's a lot like quicksand. You got a lot of metaphors. I'm just saying that, you know, meeting your birth mom is hard enough to meet her in jail. Hmm. I found her standing over a dead body. I got your message. How'd you find me? It was easy. You just followed the only road to Whiptail and you saw my car. No, I stopped at the first diner. I figured wherever you were, you'd be eating, and I was right. Thank you for coming. Oh, Cassie, this is my friend Vic. Vic, this is Cassie. Hi. Hi. It's a long drive up here. You, you must be starving. Want to go whip you up something? Oh, no, I'm okay. Just say yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. I'll get you a couple of drinks, too. He's cute. And he can cook, too. I heard that. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. I have a friend in L.A. working fraud. Your friend, the cop. The detective. He tells me Van Jefferson has more than just a criminal record. They're watching him as a possible suspect. Him and his partner, Delson. Suspected of what? Fraud, insurance scams, stage accidents, you know, swoop and squat stuff. Okay. This is you. Your SUV. 
The bad guys have two cars. The first car, sourdough, that's the one closest to you. The other one, the ride, that's the swoop car. The swoop car waits for the squat car to slow down, forcing the sourdough to slam on his brakes, forcing you to slam into his buns. That's what Jefferson was up to. But that can't be very lucrative. How many accidents can a guy have? Jefferson and Delson weren't in the accidents. Police suspect they were acting as brokers, selling out parts of the insurance claims to the highest bidders. Doctors, lawyers, physical therapists, art repair shops. That's how they made their money. Insurance settlements. Staged accidents is a $20 billion business, which you and I pay for with higher insurance rates. So what does any of this have to do with Hannah McPhillips? McPhillips, McPhillips, why do I know that name? Uh, Hannah McPhillips, hello, my birth mother? No, not Hannah. Mark McPhillips. Her husband. I have his cell phone records. You got his cell phone records? Man, that cop must really like you. Detective, I'm, I'm working him. Anyway, according to these records, Mark McPhillips was using his cell phone when he said it was broken. Uh, who was he calling? His house. To Hannah. Why didn't he go home sooner? Well, maybe he did. What if when Hannah got home, she found the dead guy, but the killer was still in the house? Mark. Yeah. He's got plenty of guns, plenty of motive. Especially if he found out that Jefferson was trying to blackmail his wife. Which is why he kept on calling her so they could get their story straight while he was racing off down the road, setting up his alibi. Good theory. How are you gonna prove it? Come with me. I can't, I gotta be at the court in the morning. Wait a second, are you telling me that you drove all the way here knowing you'd have to turn around and drive right back? Yeah. Wow. Cassie, I would never do that for you. Yeah, you would. No, really, never. Yeah, you would. I would not. Yeah, you would. Guess who I found? Dale Browning. Turns out he's a real person. At least he was, for a day. Died at birth. February 20th, 1947. I'm guessing that's pretty close to your birthday, isn't it? That's how it's done, isn't it? When you want to create a false identity. Start with a real person, get a real birth certificate, but leave off the death certificate. That'll get you a social security number. But you don't have either of those. Why is that? No bank account, no credit cards. How do you exist, mister? Where'd you get that money to buy that new car you were driving around my town drunk in? Oh, well, I don't have much time for chit-chat either. Not with all those answers flying back into my inquiries. But you'll pay as soon as I find out what's really going on. As soon as I find out who you really are. Hey, you must be Chief Connor. What do you want? Garrett Desmond, attorney at law. I'm Philby's lawyer. I'll be handling his case. Oh.
Delson. The dead guy's partner? What about the other one? Some thug? Dad, you know what? This looks really bad. I think we should get you to see that. I tried to take him to the ER, but he insisted on coming here. It's nothing. Well, at least let no. me clean it. Look, never mind this. What, you wanted to get infected? Is that what you want? The only thing that matters is getting your mother out of jail. And how is waving a gun at Delson going to help get Hannah out of jail? Man's a crook, just like Jefferson. You know about Jefferson? Delson knows about Jefferson. All I wanted for him to do is tell the cops what he knows. I'm not sure it counts if he tells them while at gunpoint. He knows who Jefferson ripped off. People like Hannah? My mother was not involved. She told you that. Hannah told me that Jefferson had been calling her. Was he conning her, blackmailing her? Having an affair with her? Mark, listen. The longer you stay quiet, the closer you become to being Sheriff Powell's primary suspect. A hundred people had good reasons to kill Jefferson. Delson's just the most obvious. At your house? Hello? Samantha? Ben. Hi. Uh, listen, could I call you back? I'm kind of in the middle of something. So am I. Our date. Oh, my God. Uh, conversation's been lively. Of course, it'd be a little less one-sided if you were here. Wow. There are no words for me to apologize enough. Now just come on over. I'm running low on peanuts, but I'm pretty sure we could find you something else. I wish I could. But you got a book-related emergency? <laughs> Heard of those? I'm with my family, sort of. You doing okay? You sound tired. No, I'm fine. Liar. <laughs> I'm fine. So, uh, how about Saturday night? Same time, same place? Yes. Dinner's on me. Okay. I just, just get some rest. Okay. Okay. Bye. You should go to the hospital. Where are you going? To get some rest. Feel better. <laughs> Good morning, Cassie. Does this look like a hunk to you? Who is it? I've only ever seen him face down. Apparently, a lot of women saw him in a lot of different positions. The guy was a total chick magnet. Some old, some young, all rich. The police think he swindled all of them, but get this, none of them would press charges. They all just wanted him back. So are you saying I inherited the always picks bad men gene from my birth mother? Nature versus nurture question? I pass. Point is, without the victim's testimony, none of this could be proven in court. Just like his swoop and squat scam. Exactly like the swoop and squat scam, which leads me to my bigger point. Jefferson's connection. Connection to what? Swoop and squatters don't just hit anybody. Right, they get hit. They do but only by specifically targeted hitters. Oh man, this is way too complicated to deal with before I've had my morning coffee. The scammers only hit drivers that they know are worth it. Drivers that they can make a lot of money from, like fleet trucks, but those are too dangerous. Too many people have died. Cars have been just run over, crushed. Breadcrumbs, I get the picture. So how did Jefferson choose his targets? Well, my very sweet detective friend has included in his otherwise very romantic email that he suspects Jefferson had an inside connection. Inside where? That's the bad part. At least six of the biggest settlements he and Delson collected in in the last two years have been with the same insurance company. Don't say it. The same one that employs Hannah McPhillips. <sighs> so Hannah was feeding Jefferson inside information. She had access to all kinds of classified client info, total coverage, annual salaries, net worth. Hang on, hang on. Are you absolutely sure about this? Well, there's no money trail tying Hannah to any kind of kickback from Jefferson's insurance settlements, but... Maybe she was involved with Jefferson. Or it could have been blackmail. Sam? You still there? Yeah. 
I'm still here. They said my daughter was here. I lied. I want to know what's really going on. What do you mean? What are you not telling me? Nothing. You're lying. We all have our secrets, don't we? Sit down. You were giving Van Jefferson information about your clients from the insurance company. He said he'd show them my felony record. I would have been fired. I told you that. You didn't tell me that he had made that threat years ago. You didn't tell me this had been going on longer than a few weeks. Or just a couple of years at the insurance company. And before that? Before that, every time he ran out of money, he'd be gone for months at a time, sometimes years. But he always, that he always showed up again. You still loved him. Yes. And hated him. But I didn't kill him. How's the food? It's great. I'm thinking about staying here a few more weeks. I hope it won't take that long to get all you'll need. Mr. Desmond, who let you back here? Open three. And good morning to you, Chief Connors. A lot more Dale Brownings out there than you'd expect. Got one that's a truck driver, one's a dancer in Vegas. Be pretty confusing for me if I had to pay attention to all of them. Good thing for me there's only one George Rabetta. Did I forget to mention I know your real name now, George? Got an old buddy of mine from my Marine Corps days. You know, Semper Fi, always faithful. He's at the DOD, the Department of Defense. Well, looks like he really came through for me. Dug up quite a file on you. George, pretty thick one to hear him tell it. He's sending it over by courier. It'll be here by tomorrow morning. I can't wait to read it. Now it's a good morning. Looks like our timetable just got moved up. I know that I want to believe Hannah couldn't do it, and I want to believe that Mark didn't do it. Please tell me you're not going to go back after Delson. Cassie, he is hiding a whole criminal enterprise. Francie said she saw a gun. The gun he may have been using to shoot at you, remember? Stay away from this guy. I won't go anywhere near him. I'm just going to go inside and take a look around while everyone's out to lunch. We have a problem. Sheriff Powell, it's Samantha Kinsey. Listen to me. 
Jefferson was killed by Delson. I know because I found a murder weapon in his office, along with his wallet and his ID. I'm bringing them to you right now, okay? Bye. I was driving and all of a sudden Delson was right behind me. He cut me off and then Bodie Wax was right behind me and I had absolutely nowhere to go. There was this turn, I made the turn and Delson kept going and the Bodie just hit him and he went over the side. Okay, now easy, you took a pretty bumpy ride yourself. With the wallet and the murder weapon. Yeah, we, uh, we found him. It's not exactly proof that Delson killed Jefferson and with Delson dead, there isn't gonna be a trial. Besides, it all adds up. I mean, Delson killed Jefferson, probably for stealing some of what they were both stealing. Tries to frame Hannah for it. Anyways, that's what'll be in my report. What about him? Well, he's denying everything, of course, but uh, given that he just tried to kill you, I'm gonna book him on attempted murder. So that means Hannah's innocent. We have to let her out of jail. No, I have to let her out of jail. You have to go to the hospital. No, 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 I'm let... fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Seriously, I have to be there, okay? I really need to see Hannah, please. Look, the paperwork to get her out is gonna take at least an hour. You go to the hospital and I'll just type real slow. Really? It's the only way I know how to type. Thank you. Dawson did it. Okay, so then the case is solved. I'd like to believe that, but I just don't. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I've considered everyone a suspect except Francie. There's something going on with her. I just can't figure it out yet. Sam, the police have done their job. Just come home. <sighs> yeah, you're probably right. So why are you still there? I still have questions. About your medical history? My eyes? No, I've got been looking into them. Lucky you. No other questions, like, why did Delson kill Jefferson? And why frame Hannah for it? Especially if she was feeding Jefferson information that was helping Delson. These are all valid questions, but not the one you're really staying there for. It just doesn't make sense. Ask her. What, who? The who is Hannah, your mother, and the what is why. What why? Why did she give you away? You just saved her life. She owes you at least an explanation. Yep, yep, you're still called. Got it. Hey! It's your time. Fresh donuts. Hey, hey! More inside your calendar. How's the shoulder today? Ah, it's a lot better. That heat, that really loosened it up. It's good you stick with it. A little extra blood flow in there will save you some nasty surgery, believe me. Morning, Patty. Sai. Sai. How's your daughter's recital? Oh, great. Huh? Hey, great. you ever gonna get that crazy client of yours out of my jail? Well, maybe if you didn't make your jail so comfortable. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Philby is tougher than most. It really is. He's claiming this is a act of conscience in protest of a merchant selling goods made by child labor. That's tough. In an antique store. Those kids would be pretty old by now. 
Well, my client has a very strict conscience, believe me. Thankfully, the owner has a less political point of view. Bottom line, she just wants him to pay the damage. He'd be better off paying for that than what you're billing per hour. <laughs> Politics is never cheap, Sergeant. See you later. All right. Take care. are amazing. When did you even have time? You know, it's all I thought about when I was in jail. It's probably what Martha Stewart said. <laughs> well, it's the least I can do for the woman who saved me. I didn't save you. You were innocent. You know, Samantha, I can never thank you enough. You want some sugar? Sure. Does it make any sense to you? What's that? Well, Van Jefferson was shot in your house. How did they get in? Oh, I guess bad people can do bad things. And why was he shot with your gun? Uh, it's all just too much. You know the truth, don't you? I know a lot of things. I know who you are. I think I knew it the moment I saw you standing outside my door, all grown up. You have his eyes. Who's Van Jefferson? Van Jefferson is my father. And he was a man I loved with all my heart. Did he know? I didn't tell him. He was just a kid. We both were two clueless kids heading off to jail. I may not have known much back then, not even right from wrong, I guess, but I knew I had to get Van Jefferson out of my life. And I knew I had to give my baby a chance. I was born while I was in prison. I'm so sorry, honey. Giving you up was the hardest thing I ever did. Until now, when you were about to go back to prison for Francie. She killed him, didn't she? You don't have any kids, do you? You'll be amazed what you're willing to do for them. Where are you going? To the sheriff? Samantha, no, you can't do this. Francie made a mistake. She made a terrible... She killed my father! She made a terrible mistake. You can't do this. You can't. You won't. You won't do it, Samantha. Francie's not a criminal. She's your sister. Toby, where are you? I've been calling you for days. I've been otherwise detained. Are you okay? Is everything all right? Everything's fine. The shop is fine. Let's talk about you. Oh, where to start? Well, there's a good chance that my sister killed somebody. Killed who? My father, but that's beside the point. It is? It's complicated. I'm adopted. I know. You know? I didn't know you knew. I do. So you know all about me, my parents, my uncle? We were talking about you. I don't know what to do. If I turn her in, my sister could go to prison for life, and if I don't, I don't know what. Huh. Philby, I don't mean for you to be making my life decisions for me, but I have no idea what to do. This may not be easy for you, but sometimes people do bad things for good reasons. Uh-huh. I gotta go.
she's your sister and she killed someone and it was your father. This is like epic. This is Shakespeare stuff. Cassie, focus, okay? This girl is my sister, even though she doesn't know she is. Should I just turn her in like a criminal? What am I supposed to do? She killed someone, right? Yes. Then you turn her in. It's not that simple. Samantha, where the law ends, tyranny begins. That's not Shakespeare. It's close enough. Look, the law is the law. It's what I know. It's what I believe in. Uh-oh. Hey, come on. Oh, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. Cassie? Chief, what are you doing? Reading. There's an alarm going off and you're just reading? Uh-huh. What if it's a big fire or an attack or an escape? Pretty good story. Are you okay? About a man who saved a lot of people's lives. A real life, honest to God hero. A guy with a special gift, kind of gift people would kill for. So you're not gonna do anything? Semper Fi, Miss Hillman. Always faithful to what? Ask Philby. Philby? George Rebetta, psychic espionage. <laughs> come on, come on, let's go, let's go. It's not a drill. Ooh, ooh. Bye, Mr. Desmond. Bye, Mr. Desmond, and thank you for the donuts. Come on, come on, it's not lunchtime. Will you move, Carmen? Let's go. Mr. Desmond, didn't you just... I just saw you leave. Before I beat him, not a chance. Okay. I know you killed Jefferson. I can go to the sheriff right now. Or, or you can tell me what happened. Come in. He was blackmailing my mom. I know that. Well, I didn't. Until I saw them together. You thought they were having an affair? I confronted her about it. <laughs> like I said, something like, how could you betray Dad like that? She was so mortified. She told me everything. Told me just what a Van Jefferson had been to her. Never meant to kill him. I called him. I asked him to meet me. I left him a message saying I was my mom. I thought I could buy him off. Telling him. And he laughed at me. He said he made more money than that off just one of the tips my mom was giving him. So you got so angry you killed him? No. No, I mean, I... I got plenty mad, but I... I thought he was gonna leave. And he didn't. He got... He got really... Really scary. He told me he knew all about me. He said he knew where I worked. He knew all the people that I worked with. He said I knew I had access to all their account numbers, credit cards, their savings, their checking. I had all the right numbers. He wanted them. So he was blackmailing you too? Yeah. I mean, he knew he couldn't do anything to me, but... He threatened Hannah. Yeah. And then he hit me across the face. 
I told him I'd get his numbers. I'd get whatever he wanted. I'll get you what you want. Okay. But I got my dad's gun instead. Panicked. I didn't know what else to do. I just felt so hopeless. I felt so angry. Are you gonna turn me in? No. You're going to turn yourself in. Do you have to? Why? Look, two very bad men are dead here. Okay, my mom's off the hook. This whole thing's over. I thought it would be. And I really, really wanted to believe that. But you can't fix one bad thing by doing another. No. No, who says so? Your mom. Listen to me. Listen to me. Just tell him the truth. You asked Jefferson over to get him to stop blackmailing Hannah. He got angry. He threatened you. You got scared. I know if I were alone and I felt threatened, I would want to defend myself. So just tell him the truth. Okay? Self-defense. You can do this. Okay. have to kill him this time that's an improvement three or four days in jail and see if you call that an improvement i paid for the broken window out of my own pocket well, at least george robert is safe because he's still dead as far as the rest of the world's concerned you did good partner now and back then when you faked his death you should come back in i'm retired desmond I'm out of the game. Then get back in. You'd be surprised at the gigs I'm getting. Since they figured out that no one suspects an old has-been. <laughs> well, since you put it that way. Thanks, Toby. Uh, listen, uh, sometimes we get a first edition of Chester Himes in, and I'll keep you in mind. Thanks. I'll be seeing you soon. Toby, wasn't that the guy I saw snooping around before I left? What guy? Now, normally I would stick around, accumulate all the relevant clues, and examine all the evidence to prove you were lying to me. But? But I have a date with Ben. And I can't keep him waiting again. <laughs> ben! Big Ben! Tick-tock! Tick-tock! I felt so bad lying to you about my family history. So this whole time you've been off looking for your family? My birth parents. And you found them. That's, that's incredible. That's, that's a great story. Uh, you don't know the half of it. Well, tell me. Well, let's just say they have their problems, but not with their eyes. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I got another one. What did the pretty lady say to the ophthalmologist? Two dates and I'm already sick of the eye jokes? Yeah, that. But she's supposed to say, I think we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Hmm? That's pretty lame. It's sweet, but lame. Sweet's good. Yeah, we can work with sweet.
It seems to me that you've each got what it takes to try again. Love is like a lottery ticket. We won the lottery. Sometimes you win. Somebody stole a bunch of mail. You've got to get mine back. It's a $50,000 lottery ticket. And sometimes 